Uh, if any, if, uh, for those who don't know me, my name is uh, Paolo Menolotto. I'm the Vice Chair of the AES here in Melbourne. Um, it's tonight, it's my absolute pleasure to introduce Fabio Maracini, who will be presenting on online music jams and rehearsals. Uh, for those who don't know Fabio, he's also a member of active member of the AES committee here in Melbourne. Um, and also has own website, uh, audiogeek11.com. Uh, and if you haven't landed there, I uh, suggest that you go and visit uh, because it's, uh, there's certainly a lot of very interesting um, links and uh, he's got podcasts and blogs and also uh, a whole lot of uh, other information around professional audio. It's well worth seeing. Uh, apart from being an avid guitarist as well. Um, and uh, uh, as a bit of a background, is he, Fabio is an audio engineer. He has a background in software and electronics. He's a certified technical project manager uh, with over 25 years of career experience. Um, many different products are developed you know, from home theater systems through to stereos, through music distribution systems. Um, telecommunication devices, software plugins, pro audio gear. So uh, well qualified um, to present tonight on a very, very topical area, um, considering our COVID-19 situation, our many months in isolation, particularly those who were uh, chiming in from uh, Victoria. Um, and tonight, Fabio will take us on a journey looking at different applications uh, of online software that enables musicians and bands to rehearse uh, and even potentially record uh, in real time while remote. Um, and he'll take us through uh, a number of those products and his experience with them. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to hand it over to Fabio and... Uh, and, uh, and we'll get the show on the road, as they say. Thanks. Thanks, Paulo. How is my audio coming out? Good? That's very good, mate. Yeah, we and can... And the hear. image coming yes. out okay? The screen? Yep. All right. Thanks for the intro. I think the I think my mum wrote that. that that's why it's so beefy. <laughs> um, and also, it's from an Italian to another Italian, so it's pretty good. <laughs> so, online jams. This is something that, to be quite honest, I never imagined be presenting on. A year ago, right? I always thought it was a bit of a far-fetched um, concept, uh, but I just wanted to differentiate f before we start between online jams and remote collaborations. And you will notice that I've actually used the term remote collab here. I'm trying to remain young and current, right? And I use trendy terms, but the, I guess the technical term is remote collaboration. So remote collaboration is the virtual studio experience is when musicians need to exchange recordings from both ends if they're in different countries. For some reason, other than COVID or because of COVID, whatever it is, they cannot meet. And it's been going on for a while. And in that scenario, the important thing is the quality of the takes that they exchange between the sides. And obviously, they need to be in sync. So there is some sort of click or some, some sort of a time code bringing them together. And these tools here, uh, so this is not the topic we're talking about tonight, but I just wanted to clarify. So that is actually different than online jamming. And there's a list of um, apps here that I've tried myself and recommended to a few people. These, uh, I think the, um, the slides will be shared later. If I'm not mistaken, we can share them on the website. So if you don't need to write down the names or anything. Um, but online jam is a little bit more restrictive than remote collaboration because quality is a little bit less important but the latency is way more important because you're not really exchanging takes from both ends and trying to synchronize one side with the other side you're really trying to get multiple players from different locations to actually play together and it's just, even the concept when you think about internet speeds in some countries sounds a bit far-fetched doesn't it like some people might say no no that's not possible it's never going to work my experience, and I'm actually jumping ahead a little bit to what it is, um, the conclusion here, it is possible if you're willing to make a few concessions and live with a few um, shortcomings, it is possible, but you have to keep an open mind. 
and also be aware that technology is constantly evolving, right? So when the whole pandemic hit in March, I started researching on the topic prompted by a friend in Adelaide, who was the first person that mentioned to me these tools. I, I heard of them before. More, I was actually working more in this space than in this space. Then I jumped in here, did a quick research, and found a few that I decided to try, right? Now, I found Jamulus and Jamkazam straight away, and Jamulus is open source, and it was written by a, a German guy. Jamkazam is in America, and it's a bit more commercial looking, a bit more polished. Uh, I found out about these other two later, and I'll talk about them because they have an interesting approach that is different than Jamulus, which is the one I'm going to be showing tonight. Quickly discarded Jamkazam for me um, on my first trial because it is client server like Jamulus is, and the servers are all in America. So the latency between here and the United States is in the hundreds of milliseconds. So there is no chance that you're going to be able to do anything online with anybody in America with, uh, with latencies that are so high, um, so high. You can certainly collab with anybody uh, as long as they have an internet connection, but you cannot jam, unfortunately, at this stage. So I quickly jumped from that to Jamulus because Jamulus allows you to run your own server. Therefore, it doesn't really matter that the servers, if the servers are in America or Germany or whatever, because you can actually start your own, okay? Um, I've also added a few links here to my website. Um, where I actually wrote an article about Jamulus specifically and another one about services in general. But the article was written six months ago. I actually recently updated the article to include more information on JackTrip and SoundJack. And I'm planning on actually covering these two in more detail because I became aware of them later. All right. Now, the next slide. Interesting thing about, um, you know, trains, right? This is from Google Trains. I just picked this up this morning because I could not find any usage data from Jamulus other than the fact that it has been evolving a lot. There's like new releases happening all the time. But you can see here that, you know, searches here for coronavirus, lockdown, online jam session, and Jamulus. A strange coincidence, right, with a little bit of a lag. So I'm very glad that the music community was quick in their feet and the technology community was quick in their feet to react. Yes, we all got punched by Mike Tyson on the face, but we quickly recovered, partially, I guess. Uh, there's obviously live music that will take a long time to recover, unfortunately. And Ben said, well, I cannot stop. I need to keep playing. How do I jam with my mates? How do we have our Friday sessions where we play to our friends? It doesn't really matter if it's professional or not, right? How do we keep this going, right? And I'll just preface this by saying, of course, if it's a well-established band like a Metallica, I'm pretty sure that by now they have a stage in a secure location where only they can go in and all the, you know, top, top of the line equipment to do a professional broadcasting from, from, from there and do a live stream and even charge tickets for it. But most of the people I was approached when I started dealing with this are not Metallica and don't have that sort of budget, right? We're sort of like stitching together existing tools to make this all work, okay? And uh, feel free to interrupt me at any time if you have any questions. Obviously, there will be some space at the end. The way that Jamulus works, as I said, uh, the other two apps that I'm going to show today are actually peer-to-peer. -peer, and we can discuss if we have enough time, the advantages and disadvantages of each one. Um, but Jamulus is actually client-server. So the trick with client server is that everybody has to be routed through the server, um, which makes your bandwidth uh, requirements a little bit lower than if you're peer-to-peer, -peer, but with the disadvantage that every audio goes to the server and then comes back to you, right? So there's pros and cons there. So as you can imagine, when you're connected with your bandmates in this particular scenario, you could be running the server in your computer, right? I'll show this to you guys and, and girls, and it's pretty simple. But you can imagine the components that generate latency here, right? First, you have your interface, whatever device you're using for, you know, jamming. Some people even do it with the internal sound card of the computer. I don't recommend doing that. I think I have very little control of the latency. If they cannot buy anything, like I'm not selling gear, but I'll focus right solo, pretty inexpensive. Right, a lot of people that um, connected with me ended up buying one for a couple of hundred bucks. I think it's a hundred bucks or something, and it does the job. 
RME, UA, whatever floats your boat. Um, a lot of people ask, is the interface, is, uh, interface that important? Well, it is important to have an interface over probably the internal gear on your computer, but the difference between a UA or an RME is probably not going to matter that much in this case because there's buffers in the network and the latency of the network that will be far greater than whatever difference you have here. So while some people advocate one uh, interface over the other, I suspect it's not actually going to make a lot of difference in this case as long as you have a good, a good you know, professional one. Okay, so you have the interface um, latency, then you have your network latency, of course, depending on how far you are from your bandmates. Okay, and the interesting thing that I found out is that this is obviously not necessarily related to physical distance. You could be in a, you know, NBN somewhere in Melbourne and somebody, I have a friend who lives in Bombok, and at last time we spoke, he didn't even have NBN there, he was an ADSL, and every time he went, actually wanted to... Um, watch a Netflix movie, he had to actually buffer the whole movie. So it's really less to do, it's, it has a little bit to do with the, the physical distance as well, but it's not only that, that's not the only factor. Um, I think I mentioned to the group here when we talked about this topic before that I helped some people in Canada and I was surprised like cities like Toronto and, 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 Montre and Montreal were actually closer in terms of pink time then, for example, Toronto and Vancouver, and you would have thought that those being the two major centers would actually be closer in terms of ping times. So it depends on rollout of infrastructure, bandwidth, how the network is loaded, so many other factors. And then Jamalus, like any of these apps, will have some buffering of its own to cope with the latency of the network that you have to take into account. So it's the compound effect that really matters for what latency you're going to experience, right? Now, next up, the way to find out ping times. Now, normally, if you're in the same city, like with the people I jammed with here in Melbourne, I had no problems. I jam with my band here. In, uh, one of my bandmates is here in Point Cook. I live in Point Cook. 5K from here. I'm fiber to the curb. NBN, he's also fiber to the curb. I think he has the Telstra fiber or something like that, something a bit more fancy than what I have. And we're able to jam, like... As I said, guarded, you know, the limitations of the technology that, you know, the audio is not perfect. Um, if you are actually further away, then the way to find out, a good way to find out is actually to go to a Wonder Network and pings and then put the cities there and try to find out what the ping times are uh, between the cities, right? And as a general rule of thumb, because more than 30, 40, maybe 50 milliseconds is the, more, the most we can, uh, we can tolerate in terms of latency, your ping time should be 20, 30 or less. If it's not, you're going to have a hard time jamming with a person from that other city. Now, for my surprise, we're actually able to play with a drummer from Brisbane on Jamalus. And a confession to make, he was on time. And our bass player wasn't. We actually left a lot about that because I think it had more to do with the audio quality or knowledge of the songs or just because the drummer just wanted to like, give it, you know, his best. So he was actually paying more attention, whatever it is. But the fact is that you do uh, adapt to the latency to a certain extent. Like if you think about it, normally when you're playing in a garage, you're actually very close to your amplifier. So there's almost virtually no latency. It's not zero, but it's virtually no latency. It's undetectable. Uh, but in an orchestra setting, if you're 17 meters apart, that would be roughly 50 milliseconds. So you can actually adapt to this and then become even a better player if you actually learn how to deal with the shortcomings of using this particular technology. Now, what Jamalus says in terms of bandwidth, because they use a very, um, a very simple codec called uh, Opus, the bit rate is actually not high at all. If you have uh, one megabits per second, up and down should be enough for a jam of four people. Uh, mine is higher, as you can see, I'm on NBM fiber to the curb, so most people here in Melbourne would have no, no problem. And to date, I've actually played with somebody in Adelaide and also somebody in Brisbane, okay? The other factors that impact a lot how much latency you can tolerate, of course, is what kind of instrument you play, how fast are the songs. I imagine that somebody playing the piano with somebody singing will be far more forgiving if you're slightly off time than extreme metal where it's extremely fast and the riffs have to be on top of the beat or something like that, right? 
So there is actually a, a, a sliding scale here of success depending on who was the crowd that I actually helped. The funniest, uh, I think, was the some, some people in Hawaii who actually had a karaoke night every Friday night and they wanted to keep karaoke and then broadcasting that out to uh, via Zoom to their friends. It was pretty interesting to set up. Now, Jamulus has a very simple uh, block diagram. And for those of you who want to explore the technology a little bit further, uh, if you want to geek out on this, first of all, it's not only open source, so you can go today and download all the source code if you want. But they also have a PDF, uh, I'll put the link on the website, uh, authored a paper auth uh, by the author that explains in more detail his, um, his architectural choices. And um, I hope the PDF is coming on top of the PowerPoint. If it isn't, just let me know. Yeah, that's where I got that uh, diagram from. That explains in a little bit more detail how it actually uses the buffers to control latency from the network. And if you want to know a little bit more about why it's using uh, UDP and why it's using uh, the Opus as a codec, the paper will explain that in far more detail. Okay. The app itself runs on Mac OS Core Audio and Windows ASIO and on Linux. Now, tricky thing is that some people that approached me asking for help is because they had like an old like audio interface that was sitting in the drawer collecting dust for 10 years that they never thought they would have they were gonna have to use again. And all of a sudden COVID happened and they go, all right, Mo2 interface from 12 years ago. Does it work? Well, as it turns out, some of these interfaces from the past don't actually have any ASIO drivers because they don't actually have any recent drivers at all. But there is a driver called ASIO for All, ASIOforall.org, I think if I'm not mistaken, you just Google ASIO for All or email me if you can't find it. That does the job for the vast majority of them. I, th I think I had one failure to date, and it was a person in the US trying to use the internal sound card of his computer, and his computer had really something really funky going on, and we couldn't figure it out. He ended up buying one of those, all right? And I said, well, buy an external, buy a recent one, buy a Focusrite solo, third generation. That's going to come with the ASIO drivers and Focusrite control. And um, you, can, you can do what, what you're trying to achieve, right? Another interesting detail is that it only works at a 48 kilohertz sample rate. So it is going to toggle your sound card to 48 if it's not at 48 already. Okay. Um, other things to remember, I think it, this might be in the previous slide that I actually... Um, but I'll mention it now, that one way to optimize the, um, the, the latency here, I'll come back a little bit, is to actually use Ethernet instead of actually use Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi adds latency as well and, and jitter. And if you're unable to, and it's funny that later I'm going to show a Facebook group that brings people who play with uh, Jamulus together in Europe, and they have like rehearsals going and band night is pretty cool. And some of them have pictures of the, you know, wife approved Ethernet wire coming through the living room or something like that, which is pretty interesting. Uh, my case here, uh, it was too complicated here. I have young kids. If I, you know, roll down the wire here, it's going to last like 10 seconds. And uh, I wasn't in the mood for, you know, dragging stuff through the ceiling without, you know, a tradie helping me during lockdown. So my alternative was a power line communication device like um, uh, that I got from uh, Officeworks for 70 bucks and it's doing the job great. Um, as you probably can see here on my screen at the top here, I'm not using Wi-Fi and it's being very, very, very stable. Okay. Now, moving a little bit forward, forward um, the basic routing for Jamulus inside your computer is actually pretty simple to understand. You fire up the software, right? And your bandmates do the same, as you can see on that diagram here. This is inside your computer. And you bring in your instruments up to two channels. So you could, you could do guitar and voice, for example. That's what I do with my band. I actually route this microphone and the output of my guitar, right? Even though I don't sing, at least we talk to each other. Uh, in our first experiences, we used to jump on Zoom and talk, talk on Zoom about the songs and it was getting too complicated. I said, no, no, here's the time. 
I'll send you guys a text message via WhatsApp when, with the IP address and the name of my server. You guys jump in, hook up your microphones. We can chat, song number one, what's the song? Go, right? And we can even mute our microphones when we're, because nobody sings in my band, actually. It's terrible, right? <laughs> we're, ter we're all terrible singers, right? So, but it supports st stereo, right? From your audio interface. So you can route up to two channels. So you could be bringing guitar in, uh, in, in um, microphone, for example. Sends that to Jamalus and brings it back. Now, I left this question here intentionally because it is a large topic, even though I only have a small snippet here. Direct monitoring or not? And after I wrote my article, I was told, you know, I was actually proven wrong that in some situations you want direct monitoring. And the person who approached me was actually right. And I had to actually, you know, it's the, you always learn from these things. The maker of uh, Jamalus and some of these other tools, they, they discuss in their papers that if you do direct monitoring, you're hearing yourself um, directly through the interface, right? So you're really hearing yourself very fast. If you're playing the guitar, you're hearing yourself extremely fast. But you're not hearing everybody else fast. So imagine in my case here in Point Cook, I think we get about 30 milliseconds in our jams. My guitar will be coming back to me like extremely fast, like in a few milliseconds from my interface and 30 milliseconds or more from everybody else. So there is going to be a discrepancy there that I may or may not be able to compensate. The trade-off is that the direct sound for me is going to have way higher quality because it's coming straight from my interface to my headphones. It's not coming from the, the server, right? Now, initially, we started by not using direct monitoring at all. Okay, I said, well, let's do what the paper says and let's experiment with that. It feels a bit funky, like sometimes you're strumming and you feel like there's a little bit of a lag, but you get used to it. You're having fun. So you get used to it. But because the quality of the audio wasn't so great, and I was the one injecting the, the backing track as well, that I'm going to talk about um, soon, the, the fact is that sometimes I got lost in the song. It's, it's a, the greatest excuse for being a sloppy player, by the way, is actually using this, to be honest. Because you can always blame how oh, the audio was bad and it was, the latency was fluctuating a lot. It's not your playing, right? <laughs> so... What happened with me was that I was actually getting lost because of the quality of the audio or maybe sometimes it was a bit confusing. And I then tried to switch to direct monitoring. And what happened was my audio was great. The backing track, which only has the drums, sounded great. And the bass didn't, but, you know, didn't really matter that much because I had the vast majority of the mix was on my end, right? But the strange thing is that when I get lost as a guitar player, if I forget the melody, I try to follow what the bass is doing. Because the bass was late, I ended up being a little bit late as well. So it ended up being a bit of a double-edged uh, sword, and I actually went back to direct monitoring, uh, to not uh, direct monitoring. Now, the exception, as I said, I was told by somebody, I think he was in England, who approached me and said, well, the exception has to be drummers, right? Because as a drummer, you're banging on the drums anyway. Like, there's no way you cannot hear yourself. Our friend in Brisbane, he plays with a Roland kit, so it's not acoustic drums. Still, you can hear yourself banging on those pads, even, even with headphones. I'm pretty sure you can. You can feel them vibrating, the sticks vibrating, right? I was a drummer before I was a guitar player. So in their case, I don't think they actually have an option. And to be quite honest, our drummer was so focused on keeping time that I think when we asked him, did you have the direct monitoring on and off, on or off? He was like, I don't even know, <laughs> right? The only thing that you want to avoid is having both. Because if you have both, what's going to happen is that you're going to hear yourself directly and then through Jamalus with a slight delay, and that's going to be confusing. And to me, the rule number one here, because the quality of the audio is not amazing, is the less you send, the better. So you limit your back. If you're using a backing track, you limit your backing track to as few instruments as you can. If you're playing, you know, effects, try to be, you know, economic with everything is my advice. Okay. Now I have it up and running here so I can show to you, but I have a demo at the end that is pre-recorded in case you're wondering if I'm actually going to play. No, I don't think I'm going to play, it, but I can actually show you how it actually looks. The you download it from the website for free and you install a server and a client 
But as you will remember from the earlier diagram, so I'll go back to this, only one person needs to run the server. Okay? So in this case here, I'm playing with me, myself, and I. And I'm the one running the server. And I'm already connected with my server, by the way. Right? So I've actually registered my server. The Jamalus creators, they do not host the server. But they do host a list of servers, which is pretty cool. So you can actually list your server and make it public. And you don't even have, have to have a server. If a server is public, you could just join in and jam with them if they allow you to do so. So it's also pretty cool. But if you want to have a server with your band, you can create your own like I did here, right? And you can also make it private. It's a little bit more involved. Uh, there's an article on my website about how to do it. And there's an article on their website about how to do it. Uh, because you have to then make it uh, private and then you have to use your internal and external IP addresses. And there's port forging that you have to do to be able to see the server from outside your network. But it's actually, well, once you've done it, it's actually pretty simple. Mine here, I'm already running on a public uh, server and I'm already registered. If anybody's on Jamalus right now, they could join my session and just pop up here. I have my guitar here connected. Right? Making some noise there. Some distorted noise there. If I'm actually, you know, switch here to a clean sound, you know, obviously I'm not strumming, it's not even in tune. Um, so here's the first caveat that some of you may already be wondering. All right, but you're sending, how you're sending your guitar here? Okay, so on the settings here, I have my guitars coming straight from a Line 6 Helix, which is an external processor for guitars so that so it's already has its tone coming not from my audio interface not from software but it's straight straight from outboard gear now if you pay attention to this diagram of course the more gear you add here the more you add to the latency but this outboard gear like the camper profiler you know the fractal audio the line six helix they were designed to be guitar devices therefore they are low latency by design Right, because they're meant like people perform live with them, right? There's professional bands performing with them live now. So they're designed to be low latency. So it's unlikely to add a lot of extra latency in my setup here. Okay. The other things I have here on my setup is that I have left the jitter buffers as auto. So you will see these things fluctuating here as more bandmates join and it tries to cope with the network latency. I left my uh this is your audio card or audio device uh, latency. So I'm using actually a buffer of 128. I'm actually connected through a, a universal audio uh, Apollo Twin. And so the Helix is actually connected to the Apollo Twin. That, that's how this is all connected. Okay. And the other things you can vary is that you can actually make the channels mono, which is why I highly recommend in this case. And I'll explain why. You can alter the quality with actually behind the scenes, just changes the bit rate of the Opus codec. The paper doesn't really explain how. Other applications like Soundjack have a far more thorough explanation between, you know, of what their different beat streams actually are, right? But this one has like, it's the layman's terms here, low, normal, high. I had success using it high and mono. And I'll explain why mono. Now, so today I'm actually using Helix connected, but as a stereo device but when i'm playing with my band i actually want to have my microphone so i down mix the helix to mono in one channel and i put my voice on the other channel now what happens if i actually go stereo is that my voice is going to be on one si side and my guitar is going to be down mixed to the other side and that's going to be very confusing for everybody right uh, we're into beatles records from the 60s like that like they had drums on one side and they were later remastered or remixed anyway i digress uh to avoid that, what I do here is I just down mix everything to mono. Everybody does the same. There's no point in overcomplicating things. You're not really doing a recording. You're just trying to, you know, keep yourself creative and, you know, jam with your band. Now, interesting to know that when you connect to a server in Jamulus, and I'm very glad that this actually populated very quickly. Sometimes it takes a while to populate and you actually have to refresh. So I'm very lucky today so far. <laughs> Now, they have lists of servers here that the creators of Jamlos put up. So you, when you register your server, it's going to pop up in this list. And the list is cleverly organized by order of ping time. So
So you can actually pick the ones with the lowest ping time if you want to jam with somebody and you don't have your own server, right? As you can see here, interestingly, we can only have like, obviously with me, the latency has to be very low, right? It's inside my own computer. And uh, there's a, somebody in Roville with a server up and running, but not jamming at the moment. And there's uh, this interesting name here for server in Ballarat. Now, you can see how it jumps to, and I'm even surprised this is California because the next here used to be Singapore or Japan, and then it goes to California and then it goes to Canada, so on and so forth. But then it gets extremely high as you can see. So really in the all genres here, I can only jam either with myself or other two people here. But if you're in Australia, you just fire up your own server, pretty easy to do. Um, th these lists have limits. Um, and here you go. I got, I got the, just, I spoke too soon. I just got the beach ball of death um, spinning here, but there you go. I always tell people like if the general list of, uh, general server list is uh, full, go to Jazz, because I guess Jazz is going to be emptier, right? And um, there's also rock, rock there, and they're taking a while to load from one to the other. And in case you were actually doing a private server, the way that you would connect with uh, somebody else, instead of actually clicking on the um, on the name of the server, you would use the address, right? So the way a private server works is that it's not listed anymore, right? Oh, here you go, some folks in Canberra, too amazing, and they're actually jamming right now. Cool. Okay, so if you, I was to like make my server private, I'll just disconnect from here, and I'll connect to it like using my internal IP rather than using the name, but then I have to do some port forwarding because uh, Jamalus uses a specific port to communicate. So you have to go to your router, open that port, and then you have to give your public address, not your internal address, your public address, which you can find from uh, whatsmyip.com or something like that, uh, to your bandmates. But I do this every Thursday night. It's not, not a big deal. Uh, I just switch my port forwarding on on my Vodafone modem. And I f my internal address is normally always the same, right? Because, um, you know, this device is always on on my network. The external changes sometimes because it's a DHCP. So if you renew your lease, you're going to get a new address. So I actually go to uh, what's my IP, get my IP, put that in a WhatsApp message to my bandmates. And, you know, a few seconds later, they're, you know, they're already here, all connected. And once uh, multiple players are connected, then it, the screen will look more like this one. Which I got it from the internet and I find it hard to believe that somebody from my beloved Brazil, country, Brazil, was actually jamming with people from England, given the latency. But anyway, maybe he was just trying to join and couldn't understand what was going on. I don't know. But in essence, what it looks like, it looks like a mixer. And what's really clever about the way it was designed is that the server mixes all the audio and sends to everybody, but you have control of your own mix. So in case you don't want to hear, you know, Joe's drums, but you want to hear this guy's, you know, violin or whatever, a little bit louder, you can adjust that. And that's not going to change anything to anybody else. Um, before you ask, of course, if you don't, if you are direct monitoring yourself, you want to mute yourself here because otherwise you're going to be hearing yourself twice. So the, you're not going to be muting yourself to everybody, right? The way to mute yourself to everybody, which is the key that I call mom just called me for dinner uh, key, is the mute myself. Like this is like away from keyboard for all your gamers out there, right? It's like I'm away from the session, I'll mute myself, and now I'm out, right? But if you mute yourself here, you're only muting yourself to yourself. So you can mute anybody else. Maybe there's a reason why... Um, you don't want to hear the singer when you're playing, it's getting in the way of your playing, whatever the reason is. Okay, so this is um, how a basic session uh, actually works and this is how the tool looks, uh, what the tool looks like. Now, following that, and I'm just going to stop for some interesting things and use cases started to surface. Some people came and said, well, that's all good but i don't have money to buy an external outboard gear all i want is to sing with my voice having a little bit of compression a little bit of reverb or i'm a guitar player but i don't actually have you know my amp is like a traditional amp so i can't connect that to a computer 
do I mic my amp or no, I actually want to use some software in the computer to replace my amp while I'm doing this. Now, how do you do that? Well, you need to put something in between your external device and Jamulus. And for that, you could be using, and because I actually worked on this on a Mac computer first, um, I actually started with uh, Loopback because Loopback is a, is a great, great app for a Mac. And I'm going to show, I'm actually using it right now, as you can see, to route the audio that I'm sending to you to Zoom because I wanted to ensure that I had full control of what's going out to Zoom, okay? This app is not free, but some of the alternatives are actually free, um, and I'll name a few here. So Voice Meter Banana, and a lot of people know that one, uh, Black Hole, Reaper Reroute, if you're you know, a Windows user and you use Reaper as your digital audio workstation, you can use Reroute from Reaper and do the same thing here as well. What Loopback is here is basically doing is tapping the audio, not directly from the audio interface, but rather from an, an app that processes my guitar sound. In this case, I'm just using Amplitube as an example. I'm not sure if everybody knows what Amplitube is. It is a, a, an amp modeler for you know the computer. It's an app that models the um, tone of your guitar. So you have amplifiers, you have delay, you have reverb, overdrive, you name it. There's bias effects is a competitor. There's a few of them. A lot of guitar players use them. So if you download that as a standalone app inside your computer, you instead of sending your instrument sound directly to Jamulus, you send that to Amplitude and you use Loopback to tap that audio and send that to the session. Now, obviously, before anybody asks, and um, of course, this is going to add a little bit of latency. Every app that you put in the chain here is going to add its own latency. So you got to be careful with uh, sample rate and buffer configs as well is where you probably have to tweak if this starts um, getting in the way. So the example I used for voice, you could actually be using a standalone app here to process voice, for example, right? A more advanced way to do this would be to actually, instead of routing to a standalone app, you route that to your digital world workstation, Logic Pro X, Pro Tools, Cubase, you name it, right? And that way you can actually have not just your guitar sound coming from your digital audio workstation uh, processed, for example, if you don't have uh, external gear, you could actually have additional things like a click, a backing track, or even a virtual drummer. If your drummer is not present, you just load a drummer inside Logic or inside Pro Tools with one of the famous plugins, or maybe it's a song that your band is working on and you can just mute some of the instruments and just jam with it if you want with the other bandmate, if the other bandmates are not present, for example. Like it's, the sky is the limit, really. You can get very creative with this. Um, again, with the caveat that you're gonna have to be mindful of latency here. So when I did this with Logic Pro, I treated Logic Pro as if I was recording instead of mixing. So when I actually mix and master, I use like higher buffer settings. When I'm actually recording, I use lower buffer settings and low latency is turned on. And I try to use as little, you know, as few plugins as I possibly can. And that was the rule of thumb here. Only the basics to get me going. Okay. With my band in particular, we don't actually use uh, Logic Pro X as a... Uh, as a backing track, if the drummer is not present, we use Guitar Pro 7, so it's a MIDI backing track that sounds like synthesized. It doesn't sound great, but it's fine. As long as we have the timing of the song, it's all that matters. And it's also routed via loopback into the Jamulus session. Okay, so this use case became quite uh, common because a lot of people realize, well, yes, I, I want to send audio into Jamulus, but I need to do some processing with it first, right? And obviously, before I forget, I'm going to talk about the others a little bit, um, sound jack and jack trip at the end. This is like insert your poison here, right? If you're using another app, there's no reason why you couldn't do, be doing the same here. So your interface is whatever interface you like, your DAW is whatever you want to use to process audio in between, and then the app is whatever you selected, okay? People have done this with, uh, with um, um, Jam Kazam in America. Right, the same setup. I've actually helped somebody setting this up uh, in America using Jamkazam, the exact same setup. But they actually was it used wanted Jamkazam because it looks more polished and commercial, and they were not very familiar with computers, and they thought that Jamulus looked a bit 
too too experimental for them okay now the next more complex thing that um you know people created during the pandemic and i'm, I'm very, actually very very positively surprised by how creative we can be as a species to overcome all this you know and keep things going some people said well if you can actually get the instead of actually you could route the audio here process or unprocessed to Jamulus doesn't really matter the question here was like can I actually get the audio out from Jamulus and then into something else well as it turns out you can in this case here the use case was get the jam from 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 Jamulus the whole jam right including your own instrument route that to OBS which is also a, a open broadcast software It's also free software that broadcasts to Twitch Facebook YouTube right and it does recording as well I highly recommend that you check it check it out um, and what we do is then we get the audio from the Jamula session and get the video from Zoom or Skype or something so the Brady Bunch kind of video like the one I'm seeing on my screen right now you know with all the faces and broadcast that out now with the caveat that as you probably know a lot of the recordings that came out during the pandemic were not done this way people were not playing live somebody had a click track and they send the click track around and a bad track and they recorded against that track and then they put that together in a studio and they put that out this is different this is this was people trying to really jam live and broadcast to their friends so I had cases in which people just wanted to do this and send everything out to Facebook so they could go live. A singer-songwriter and their friend who plays the acoustic guitar, right? And they wanted to play together and keep their audience alive in California, whatever it was, right? And they said, all right, we're going to go together every Friday night and we're going to set up a time. We're going to send a link to everybody and we're going to put this out. The other use case was like some people didn't want to go public at all and just they said no 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 we just want to route the audio back to zoom so our friends can jump on a zoom call and actually um enjoy us playing which is actually not far from what i'm doing right now with uh, with loopback right i'm actually routing my audio using loopback into into zoom right it's pretty much the same concept if i was actually here playing to you to you guys it would be like this with the addition that then you would have Jamalus bringing another bandmate into the session okay now what I normally tell people when they want to do this is like if you're doing this just for fun yes go ahead and do it I'll help you set it up it's not hard there's information on online about how to do this you know not a problem if you want to continue to do this because you're trying to keep your audience to me there's a quality element that you have to consider not just the fact that the streaming is not going to be perfect because obviously there's going to be a little bit of garbling of the on the audio between you and your bandmate depending on network conditions you're not going to be able to control that um, it's also the fact that if you've never played with your bandmate online I advise strongly advise them that they do that first I said to them Go find your bandmate, install Jamalus or any of these tools. If it's in America, it could be Jam Kazam. Go and practice this for a couple of nights and see how you interact with each other. Because you'll find out that your experience with your bandmates is very, very different than being in the same room. No, no doubt about it. Like you cannot see each other, even if you put up a Zoom call at the same time, there's gonna be a little bit, bit of a delay. And sometimes you don't know exactly if you get lost where the other person actually is. And it, it is a different experience. So get used to that first to make sure that you can deliver the product that you think your audience deserves before you go any further would be my advice. Like I'm no producer, but it's my advice as an engineer, right? To make sure that you have a baseline that you trust before you actually add more elements. Because a lot of them said, all right, we'll jump on a call with you, Fabio, on Zoom. And in one hour, you explain to us how to set it up set this all up and I'm like let's just hang on a minute let's just take baby steps here and make sure that the basics are working first before we go any further the more elements you add the more can go wrong right and also uh, maybe uh, you know just predicting some of the questions there of course the video from zoom and the audio from Jamalus know nothing about each other they don't know about each other's existence so there is no way that they're going to be in sync now having said that OBS actually has a clever offset setting that you can uh, use to delay the audio a little bit 
to try to match the video. And I know people who have done this successfully to a point where people are strumming and you can't really tell that they're actually strumming out of sync. It's not like, it's not like completely crazy, you know, um, cheap movie. In Brazil, we used to have these movies where the lips don't move accordingly. Paulo is laughing because probably the same in Italy, like countries that actually, you know, translate the movies. They, there's this crazy effect where people are speaking, but they, they don't match the lips. And it was not. It was actually pretty impressive what they've done. And some of them have done this empirically because OBS allows you to record as well. So what they did is actually instead of streaming, they recorded or they did a dummy stream and some friend actually sort of tried to measure what the latency was. Some of them were more professional and just recorded the whole thing and then did the, did the clap method and tried to match the clap in the audio with the clap in the video. Um, you know, it was really whatever, whatever floats your boat. Uh, no perfect formula, but my recommendation was like you stream that for a while, right? Try to get the average, put that average number in there and then hope that on the day that the average will be more or less the same. You know, it, you, there's not, not much else you can control at this stage. Okay, and they got some interesting results out of that. Uh, and I wanted to, before I actually go into links and more like dense information, there's an example here that I wanted to share with you people. And I'm actually going to be helping these guys later this week. So they actually allowed me to show this. This was like first take. There were still a few issues, but these people were not. They're all in the uh, United States of America. And they're obviously not in the same house, and they were actually recording this and playing together. So this is the person I've been talking to from this group, and I think he was the one doing the recording, either him or him. And you can see that like she was maybe a little bit, the image was a little bit behind, but let's just look at the alternative, right? The alternative is that you're locked inside and you cannot rehearse for like four, four months, right? Even though the audio is not perfect. And, you know, wouldn't you choose this over not rehearsing at all is the question, right? Um, the other things that you can do if you want to go further with this, so this is actually, they cleverly named the video Zumulus. It's pretty interesting. Um, so that's why this is a reminder for me to show the Zumulus example here, right? The other things that I wanted to show tonight, uh, this has grown quite a bit um, in terms of community. And a lot of the information comes from this group. There's a few groups on uh, Facebook. Um, there's a group called Jamulus War Jam. And they're actually in Europe. And what they do is that they actually have band practices uh, established every, every weekend. And they actually put up a spreadsheet when it's like Friday or Thursday or something with like, here are the songs we're, we're going to be jamming on this weekend, right? And here's the who's going to be playing each instrument. And then if there's any empty space there, people will jump in and say, oh, I know that song. I'm going to play this instrument. I'm going to play that instrument. And they go and they have fun and they record that live. Uh, sometimes they put it out on Facebook as a, as a recording done after. I've seen some of their recordings and they were actually looked remarkably, remarkably in sync, video and audio. And they told me that one of them is an engineer and he actually fixes everything up after the recording is done. He goes and syncs everything up. Not the audio between all the parties, but just the audio with the video. Okay? So I think it's a certain, um, something that is definitely worth uh, checking out. There's a lot of communities forming around the tools. One of the members from this community here, he actually wrote, and I'll share this link with the PowerPoint is actually shared. Um, I'll rewind a little bit the story. One of, one of the things that people ask me is, okay, so the server here, do I have to leave my computer on all the time? Well, you do, right? Because the server is the server is running on your computer. If I go here and stop the server, that's it. My server is gone, right? Now, the alternative is you could either host this on a computer that is always on, right? Like if you have another computer hanging around the house, some people have done that with a Raspberry Pi, for those of you who knows what a Raspberry Pi is. And some people have moved this to the cloud. So some bands decided, well, we 
we can con cannot control who, which band members will be available at which point. So the best idea, if we all live in adjacent cities or whatever, is to find a um, like a service like AWS or Google servers and host a server over there. So this guy wrote the Idiot's Guide to Installing or Upgrading a Jamulus Server on Amazon AWS. Um, if you pardon my French, but if you follow that guideline, it's pretty full on. Somebody approached me since then with like a command line that claims to install everything because I haven't tried yet. I haven't shared with that with anybody. But there's a few guidelines like that out on the internet right now because quite a few people are doing this sort of thing. This particular guideline came from one of the creators of this website here. So he actually shared that here and I captured that here. The tricky thing is guaranteeing that the server is going to be in a particular location that is favorable to you. So when I was approached by this friend in Adelaide, he actually wanted to ultimately move the server uh, the, the, to, to the cloud so his bandmates could practice even when he was not available, right? And it was really hard actually in Adelaide to find a provider that guaranteed that the server was always going to be in Adelaide. I guess Melbourne and Sydney are probably easier, but in Adelaide it was really hard. The only provider wanted to charge me like an arm and a leg to guarantee the server. But if you're in one of the big cities, you're probably a little bit, um, you have a better chance of that happening. Okay. Now, other interesting uh, links to share, the link to Jamulus itself. So if you look at this uh, link from six months ago, it was at so SourceForge. For those of you who knows what uh, SourceForge is, with, and they still have a link to SourceForge here where you can actually go and get all the source code. But they actually ended up uh, creating a more polished and better looking website with like tips and tricks. Uh, which sort of made my article a little bit ineffective, but I don't mind, you know, it's, uh, it's good, you know, to help out in any way, shape or form. Um, and here you will find more information about how to run a server, configure some tips and tricks. And I find the tips and tricks section interesting because they go a little bit beyond and they source information from some of the users, like for example, how to configure your hardware and, you know, and software. Um, some of the things that I explain are actually covered in this particular document. It's a massive Google doc document. Uh, how to, you know, route Jamulus into Zoom. I think I've explained that. Interestingly enough, they don't mention uh, Loopback here, but it, I think it's because it's a paid application. They do uh, mention uh, Voice Meter Banana and they do mention uh, Black Hole, which you can use as well. Voice Meter, particularly good if you're on a Windows environment. They also mention how to record on Reaper. Um, if you want to do a recording, there's even a guy who wrote an application that allows a jam leader to push chord song sheets to each other between bandmates. So they have chord sheets in front of them with the chords of the songs that they're actually going to play. Like what I'm trying to say here is that you can geek out to your heart's content here <laughs> with this sort of stuff. Some of us may want to do that. Some of us may just say, I'm, I, I'm just a musician. I just want to install the thing so I can actually practice with my bandmates. Right. Uh, other things I wanted to mention uh, on the link section here, I've actually added links to the Opus codec. If you want to know more about that particular codec that some of these applications use and also UDP. OK, but I just wanted to give some space here to the other applications as well, because like it's an unfair bias to Jamulus just because I, it was the first one I used. Uh, I think you could check out, if you want to follow the links here, you can check out Jack Trip, and you can ch uh, check out uh, SoundJack. They're both um, being updated quite extensively, and some of them may be turned into commercial applications in the future. I'm going to talk about that. What's interesting about Jack Trip, if you're interested in the technology, just going there and reading, not, be not only because it was created by uh, people from Stanford, they have a thorough explanation here on their website on the difference between using all, all obviously all the sources of latency that I explain here tonight. Okay, like geographical latency, internet backbone, internet service lace, uh, latency, your own network, um, your sound card, um, some acoustic latency, acoustical latency as well. I mean, in my case here, I consider that you're probably very close to your microphone anyway, but you know, things to consider, but they do actually um, cover in more 
detail, differences between the topology of hub and spoke or client and server that Jamlos uses, and the pros and cons of that. So the pros being that requires no changes to the performance, uh, performance home uh, firewall. As I said, minimal processing and bandwidth requirements because everybody's getting the same pipe thickness here, right? With the disadvantage that obviously the latency between this guy and this guy is going to be higher, higher because they have to go through that guy, right? Whereas on the other hand, peer-to-peer -peer has the disadvantage that the more people you add, the more pipes you have coming in and out of your own, uh, your own instance, but your latency to each other, to all the other players may be a little bit uh, lower. So I actually had one person that approached me and said that they made the jump between Jamulus and Jacktrip. And it worked better for them with two people playing. When the, once they jumped to three people playing, Jamulus was better. This highly depends on where you are and what your conditions are. So my rule of thumb here is really experiment. Try them all. They're all free. They're relatively easy to install. You may have fun while doing it anyway. There will be a few things that you cannot avoid. I was approached by a person in Hawaii and Hawaii's lowest uh, latency from Hawaii is actually Seattle, I think. And it's like 70 milliseconds. And I said, well, you know, you're living in Hawaii, might as well enjoy Hawaii, right? Uh, you, can, you can jam with other people in Hawaii, but between Hawaii and the mainland, just not possible at this stage, okay? Um, of course, feel free to tell me wrong. If anybody knows of any other applications and any other way in which this can be done, my email will be here at the end. And the other things that I, that I recommend here is reading not only on the JackTrip website, if you go to the SoundJack website, there's a link to the paper written by the developer of that application as well. Uh, SoundJack is like web-based and it is peer-to-peer and is written by a German guy, and he has in his paper thorough explanation of all the choices he made, because of course this was a paper for his uh, PhD, right? Um, so you, you can imagine how thick, this, this is actually a simplified version of it, but the, his whole thesis is actually on the website, if you want to read it, right? Um, so on SoundJack, you actually look, link everybody via web uh, application, it's also peer-to-peer. -peer. And for that reason is, is that I'm actually leaving this, uh, more dense discussion out of the equation here today. Let me just mention here in passing, so you can go and try them out. What I really wanted to cover, the bulk of what I wanted to cover is how creative you can get with this in you know, processing audio from uh, a different piece of software or sending a backing track or streaming all that out to you know, the cloud or streaming that to, to your friends. Now, last but not least is considerations about the future. What other architectures and network provider partnerships can appear? Is somebody teaming up with a network provider to ensure quality of service when you're connected? If you want to go commercial, I would imagine that that's the way to go. You download these things here for free. As you could see, the audio quality may not be great. In some cases, it will be better. In some cases, it will be a little bit worse. But it was free and you're jamming, so you're not complaining. But if some of these guys want to charge like 20 bucks a month, then there will be quality of service considerations into play. Because if your Netflix starts crackling, you go and then complain because you're paying for it, right? So I'm pretty sure there are people looking at this with uh, you know, very interested eyes of what can be done with this. Could be leveraging on 5G, more reliable connections. And I'll talk about these guys in a, in a, in a minute. Will the big names take over? Will like somebody make the iStream 2000? You know, that will be the next uh, Tim Cook's invention. I'm pretty sure Apple is going to only jump, jump on this when you know comes you know to a certain level of quality. Maybe others, other companies will jump in first. Could you actually make a business out of it, like by creating virtual rooms for bands and renting them out? And actually, some people in that Facebook group that I mentioned have actually done so. Right, they actually have created so the tech people in the group they're not actually doing that for money, they're just helping each other out. There are some people there who are IT people, and some other people are musicians, they don't know anything about IT. So the IT guys went and set up a whole bunch of servers, allocate that them to certain bands, and then said, Oh, there you go, you can use it. Okay, now, last but not least, interesting, uh, check, check out these guys, Aloha, they're from Scandinavia. 
Actually, the name, the reason why it's called uh, Aloha, I think it's because one of the largest or earliest forms of worldwide broadcasting was, were, were done by Elvis in Hawaii in the 70s. Um, I wasn't alive back then. No, I'm just kidding. But I, I was just too young to remember it, probably. But they explained that on their website, why they named it uh, Aloha. They're claiming, all right, and it's a claim at this stage that with the 5G enabled devices, so I suspect they're gonna be ro rolling out their own gear. So you're probably gonna get, have a box like this already connected to 5G that you connect to, is what it looks like. You're gonna get ultra low latency. They claim no latency at all, which I think is a bit of a bold claim. Um, I actually got in touch with them, as Paulo mentioned at the beginning, I have a podcast. The best way to approach these companies is to actually ask them to come on my podcast and interview them. These guys agreed to come on. But because they haven't really launched their product yet, they cannot tell me what the secret sauce is. There's no point in doing the interview if you cannot tell me what the secret sauce is, because that's going to be my first question. All right, what's the catch here, right? How do you actually guarantee the low latency here? How, how were these people 670 kilometers apart with virtually no latency, right? Um, if any of you has, have been to the AES uh, Vienna event two months ago, I think it was, there was a Scandinavian uh, student presenting on this, and he was actually jamming with some bandmates inside his uni in Sweden, I think it was. And they were actually like several meters apart, and, but they had fiber connection uh, between the buildings. Okay, so certainly, as both as an engineer and as a musician, very, very exciting future, not only for remote collaboration tools that I mentioned at the beginning, but also for the um, online jamming um, as a whole. So keen to hear what you guys uh, have to say and what other ideas you have and if you have any questions. That's excellent, uh, Fabio. Uh, Graham, did you want to do you want to take over since you've joined? Um, if you let me, I, I was late. <laughs> That's okay. I did the intros. You you can do the the finale. Oh well, there you go. Um, <laughs> I, I I'm amazed. The uh, the work that Fabio's done is absolutely the voice of excellent experience, practical experience, and there's a fair bit of technical stuff there as well. Fabio is the music side. But there's so much stuff there that would be helpful. I just uh, wonder if you're going to get a lot of calls and people getting in touch to uh, sort it. I yeah. had a question. Sorry. No, no, happy to answer any questions now or by That's email, good. whatever you I, have. I, just, I, you know. I had questions and we've got one from Steve. So, Steve. All right. Thank you, Fabio. That was, that was really great. Have you come across... Um, any of these link ups using Dante? Uh, no, but that's actually an interesting question, but I haven't. Fair enough. Uh, but probably between sites, you could probably have that, I imagine. Yeah, I, I was thinking more in terms of um, the interface part. You you can get exceedingly low latency. Oh, it's exactly. your yeah, machine. I see what you mean. Yeah. Well, May, most of the people that I helped were people with um, like a lot of budgetary restrictions and they either didn't have an interface at all or ended up, ended up buying the cheapest that they could actually find. Uh, but it would be interesting to see what you could do if you actually brought more professional interfaces and systems like Dante into play. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I think, think the, short, the short answer is no, but I'm um, keen to find out if anybody's doing this. Can if you I stop get sharing a screen, I'll let you know. Yeah, can, thank you. Can you stop sharing your screen, please, so I can see oh, yeah. your face? Yeah. Oh, good. I can see everyone. Oh. There you go. Yeah. It goes to the speaker That's now. Better. Right? There's always the issue with these networks that route. It's great to have fiber all the way to your desktop, but you're still going to have to contend with a routed solution up and down a whole lot of routed protocol stacks. So maybe the 5G answer is that they're they're putting yeah. some new, new kit in that's that's uh, a bit faster on the routing. Yeah, I can see the questions now. Do you want me to go through them? I think yeah, the first may Peter, as well. 
Peter uh, sent a link to a easy for all to everybody. That's good. Thank you, Peter. Second question is from Corey Green. Does loopback introduce latency? That's a very interesting question. Um, I suspect it introduces a little bit of latency, but it's tolerable. Like I'm actually monitoring my own voice and I just brought the wrong screen here. I'm happy it's not my bank account. There you go. I'm actually monitoring my voice here and I can hear a tiny little bit of echo on my voice here. Um, so yes, any app you add in between is going to add a little bit of uh, latency. But loopback so far has been great for me for many other things. If you, for example, like sometimes I tutor people, like I have a client in LA and I actually teach him how to do stuff on Logic Pro X, like quantizing and stuff like that. And to ensure that I route my audio to him properly, I also lose, use loopback. So I actually use loopback to route uh, you know, audio from Logic, whatever I'm playing on my computer. So it's a great little app. There's a Somebody's question, mentioning sonobus.net. There you go. I, I love having new names to try out. Somebody's ask, mentioning is, so, uh, Ben Loveridge is, is mentioning ben, is Sonobus. Is Ben there? Do we have Ben Loveridge? No? No. Okay, so he's saying two, two things mainly, that sonobus.net is another one that we can try. All right. I'll write that down. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, there you go. You go, mate. Uh, yeah, I was just putting in a few links of just some other apps that we've been uh, testing out. Some of us just came out probably a month ago. It's kind of taken the the local community by storm. It's it's um it's pretty good. Still still being worked on, but mm -hmm. in a similar vein to a lot of the other 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 apps as well. And you're getting some experience with that. Ben? Yeah, we've been, we've been testing it out, comparing that with Jack Trip. Um, Sonobus is really easy to use, like it's literally plug and play. Obviously, yeah, having an interface still helps, but it can run on um, lots of different platforms, Windows and Mac as well. So definitely the sort of the easy version of it, but it doesn't solve the, you know, terrible network or bad ISP um, issues, mm. but it's definitely a more consumer orientated version. But um, yeah, okay. we're checking that out as well. Fabio? Yeah. And it looks like he also mentioned musicians together apart dot com. Is that it? A website that is currently using Jack Trip. Yep, that's a that's another one that's um just mm -hmm. sort of sprung up. So you can rent mm -hmm. virtual servers in locations. So I'm just setting up one in Melbourne at the moment to try out and um yeah, testing one at, at uni as well. But essentially like you mm -hmm. can run Jack Trip yeah, running Jack Jack Trip in hub mode, similar to um I think Jamulus is that sort of similar idea, but um, yeah, another one that's that's fairly new. So lots of things to test out. And it looks like Sonobus is also peer to peer. Is that right? Yeah, Sonobus is peer to peer, much like the yeah. original version of Jack Troop. Yeah. The Has next... anybody had a chance to try some of the five G routing and uh, ping it and see what sort of latency you, you can get? It's probably too new. Uh, I haven't. I know it's available here in Point Cook where I live, surprisingly, because we're always forgotten. They, everybody says the Western suburbs, right? <laughs> Whatever. But it looks like there's coverage here, but, you know, I haven't tried yet. That's pretty good. I thought you might have had to go to the airport. It would at least, One thing is that at least it would be pretty empty. Well, that's true. I, I had 5G pop up on uh, my system in Frankston, and it lasted for about a week. I suspect they were just testing it, and then it disappeared. And you didn't get to ping it, right? You should have no, pinged it. No, I didn't it. get to ping it. You should have pinged it. Anyway, they, they may be spending more money on their routers. I don't know. Right, yeah. uh, next question. Uh, next question was for me to stop sharing my screen, which I have already done. <laughs> Thank you. That was an answer. That was good. Um, am I moderating this? Corey Green was saying thank you. Uh, ben, more information. Dante. Just comments on Dante. Okay, it's choosing a server. Um, there, there are, at the moment, there is not a lot in the way of uh, cloud servers for this, and they certainly don't help you with working out what sort of latency you get before you, you commit your money, I guess. Is there any support coming through for that? Are you meaning choosing either uh, Google yeah, or Amazon? The, the problem is you don't. Yeah. <laughs> choice process is you pay your money. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think I have to get uh, in touch with people in the forums. And yeah, yeah, communities yeah. to find out what people have already tried. The thing is, 
the landscape right now is like wildly different than it was in April 6th when I wrote my article for the first time. I look at that, that article right now and I'm like, man, that, that is so, so uh, March 2020, right? <laughs> because it was, the, it was in its infancy. I think we've evolved 20 years in six months in terms of uh, what we're doing with this technology. <laughs> so now if you actually look at the forums, there are people with like, thesis about what you can do with this technology and some of them have uh tested all possible servers out yeah, there yeah. in all sorts of locations so they, uh -huh. the guidance will be coming from your peers i'd say yeah. it's like either email me if you want to know if i know i'll put you if i don't know i'll try to put you in touch with somebody who, you, who may know a lot of these things here i actually learned from others really that mention oh try this try that like tonight i already learned two more that i can try that probably tomorrow morning i'm going to be banging on Excellent. Questions? No? I guess not. I'd like to thank Fabio for taking over for me. Thank you for doing that. So well, that the questions? Yeah, it was easier. Paolo, I guess, because it was already here. Oh, and Paolo, Paolo for uh, organising the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, can I thank you, Fabio, for a, thank a you. very informative session, a lot of information. I think we're all appreciative of that, and we'd all say thank you with the um, some sort of clapping. You know, you're just totally muted clapping. There you go. But thanks very much for that. Excellent, and the information will be available. I guess. Thank yeah. you also to Peter for organising it all and being tolerant. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to send the PowerPoint to Peter so he can actually share with them. Yeah, everybody. Good. The links are all there. Like most of the things I mentioned tonight, you can find by googling. Yeah, you yeah. know, but or email me if you want to know more specifics about something. It was just too much to cover in one presentation, I think. But Fabio, it's as you say, it's a very rapidly evolving area. So uh, you yes, I think like it's it's interesting. Like the uh, the Jam Kazam, for example, which is more commercial. Like when I found out about it, they had like some videos from 2014, and um, you know, and it was pretty much abandoned. And then obviously these guys said, oh, opportunity, and then just, just jump, jumped in. And in a matter of weeks, there was like four or five updates. They probably went like crazy trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. catch the wave, I guess. That's true. There's quite a few people in that wave, millions, hundreds of millions. Yeah, Excellent. it's coming back in Europe. So if you look at the servers popping up in Jamulus, you can see which countries are having lockdowns. It's actually a pretty interesting metric <laughs> for that true. sort of stuff. In a surge in England, way, I guess, but you can you could see though seriously back in March, April, Melbourne was like flooded, and then it went down, and then it went up again, and now it went down a little bit because now today of all days we can go anywhere, and but we can still only have two people in your house, right? So bands are still limited, but in Europe, if you look at the European uh, addresses, you can see that like it's exploding again with the lockdowns. It might be a better way than monitoring sewage water. Yeah. Yeah, there's okay. many, many ways to monitor that, I guess. <laughs> That's right. Anyway, thank you very, very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Very, very good.